Okay, my name is Ralf Hertwig, that's spelled H-E-R-R-T-W-I-C-H, -R -R and Ralf with an F, as the German spelling goes. Uh, I'm Director of Driver Assistance and Chassis Systems Group Research and Advanced Engineering for Daimler. We were working at that time on aggregating data from a group of vehicles with the sensors that they had been equipped with, uh, and, and Mohan helped us in, in getting that collection done. That was a joint research project that we get together with our research lab that we have up in Palo Alto in Silicon Valley. Uh, and that turned out to be a very nice cooperation with UC San Diego. Pretty much so. I mean, we've been following this vision that we have, which we call the vision of accident-free driving for quite a long time. Uh, and to us, that means actually to uh, put that technology on the vehicle, which is able to assist the driver in critical situations, when the driver is overlooking certain situations on the road, when he has not made the proper judgment, let's say, as far as braking distance goes. Um, in order to do that, we have to sense what's going around in the environment of the vehicle, and that requires a lot of sensor capabilities, and that's much of the technology that we've been seeing introduced to vehicles over the past few years. It's, it's a real technology challenge because the volume of data that you're assembling is just very high, and the speed at which you have to process it in real time is then an additional challenge. I mean, it's not like that we have a vehicle sitting at some spot and then take all the time to look around it. I mean, we're moving at speeds of 70 miles an hour, what have you, uh, and still have to make such assessments. And we get a lot of data. I mean, we are looking into the environment with the new systems that we're about to put out, uh, not only with radar as we do it today, but also with vision systems and even stereo vision systems. So we had a lot of pixels to process all the time, and that's really a challenge. And that's uh, at, the, at the verge, really, what we are able to do today. Well, the situations we have addressed so far are mainly what we call parallel traffic or longitudinal control of the vehicle. So we are able to follow a leading vehicle. We're able to make an emergency stop if there is some obstacle in front of us. Uh, we are now expanding that to also cover lateral issues or cross-traffic issues. Now, the, the problem or the additional challenge with cross-traffic, for example, is that whereas if you have a parallel or even an oncoming object, you can observe that for quite some time. If you have cross-traffic, it's there all of a sudden. I mean, it's, it's the typical situation that you see at an intersection when somebody is taking your right of way, and, and that happens within the fraction of a second. And that's a totally uh, a new challenge in terms of situation assessment that our systems have to do. And that's really what we're working on right now, and that's what we're hoping to put out in five years from now if we're successful with the work that we do right now. Yeah, actually, we, um, I mean, with the vision systems that we have on the vehicle, uh, we have, um, we're widening the scope at which we look. Well, just like you turning your head left and right, we go with a wider camera angle, uh, or even additional cameras that are able to look into those directions. What might also help, and we're experimenting with that, uh, is vehicle communication. So if vehicles that you don't yet see are able to send you messages about their presence, then you can take that into account. The problem with communication-based approaches, however, is that you would need to have many vehicles equipped with that, ideally all of them. And that, of course, is a problem as far as rolling out the technology is concerned. Yeah, that's not so much the issue because that's, that's already in the standardization process and there is pretty much agreement on, on how that communication should work and, and how it should be built. And there's one frequency set aside at 5.9 gigahertz in the United States and that's been pretty stable for the last 10 years or so. Um, but really getting that technology out in the field, deployed on every car, that's really quite a bit of a challenge. It, it, it's not necessary that we are less incentivized by, by rolling this out, but it's, it's really what kind of solutions do you want, uh, want to offer. And of course, you don't want to offer a solution where just Mercedes avoids colliding into another, with another Mercedes. You, you want to do that for every other car that may get into your pass. Uh, and so standardization of this is very important to us, and a coordinated rollout plan 
of, of many different vehicle manufacturers, I think is key for, for rolling out such a technology. As, as far as, as differentiation on this, yes, of, of course we like to, to put these things on a Mercedes first. Uh, but if you look back in the past, I mean, all the technology that we had put on our vehicles first has then later on appeared on other car brands as well. Uh, and it, in all fairness, we see it as part of our mission to advance the entire field of vehicle safety, and not just for our customers. Much of the work uh, that has been done uh, in the field of driver assistance was focused on vehicle safety in the past. And we now see that many of the systems that have been developed also can help with more ecological driving, yeah? so saving fuel uh, uh, while driving on the road, like ACC, yeah? advanced cruise control. Uh, that actually also can smoothen out the way that you drive or that your vehicle moves. Uh, and by that, it saves fuel. And you can implement little things on top of these systems, like if you take into account um, the terrain you're moving in, like rolling hills or so, then you can do what a good cyclist would do, and that is if you go downhill, you pick up speed so that you don't need as much fuel going up. Or, or that if you're about to shoot over the crest of a hill, then uh, you can already slow down before being there because otherwise you'd just be at a too high speed after going that. We've put out such a system for uh, Freightliner trucks uh, recently. It's been, been fairly successful and, and it saves quite a bit of fuel. So we're looking into putting such a system on passenger cars as well. This, yeah. this of course, becomes even more important when you look at electrical vehicles because well, for electrical vehicles you may say, well, fuel saving is not the issue. Well, for electrical vehicles, range is the issue. You want to go as far with a single battery filling uh, as possible. Uh, and so the same technologies that you would use for traditional cars can be used for electrical cars as well. Electrical cars are certainly um, an important part on our future roadmap of vehicles. Uh, they're not necessarily, at least for, for the time being, not necessarily uh, a full substitute for the cars that we've been seeing, but there are certain uh, areas of applications where an electrical car uh, will do the job. Like we've been testing uh, with live customers actually, uh, fleets with electrical smart vehicles, or little two-seaters that you maybe know, um, in the city of London, the city of Paris, and so on. Um, and so they're really great for these urban commutes. Um, and of course, we're having hybrids. I mean, the, the S-Class hybrid is a huge success. We're selling uh, very many of those. Um, so we're slowly getting there. I mean, and there will be different versions of electrical vehicles also. I mean, we have battery electrical vehicles like the Smart. We'll probably have range extender vehicles which have a battery but then have a combustion engine that goes with it and then is able to recharge the engine. And of course, we're also working with fuel cell vehicles uh, which take hydrogen and, and generate electricity from that. My own, yes. own research focus, well, uh, I'm in charge of driver assistance and chassis system innovations for Mercedes. And so all the systems that uh, are supposed to help the driver uh, and all the systems that are supposed to stabilize the vehicle while it's on the road, uh, those are under my current responsibility. Much is safety oriented, much is comfort oriented. Uh, and also, as I said, some of it is, is ad addressing fuel efficiency. I tend to say the killer app is saving lives. <laughs> But thank you, thank you. That's a perfect quote. That's actually um, a great quote. It's uh, no, no, really. Uh, the uh, the issue for us is to uh, really protect not only the people inside the vehicle, but also everybody on the road uh, from the potential dangers uh, in traffic. Uh, and we're trying to get what we call. 360 degree vision around our vehicles so that they have sort of a safety cocoon around them, uh, saving the people in the vehicle, but also protecting anybody who is in the vicinity of the vehicle. I mean, one, one of the, the most interesting projects that I saw was where, where he sort of observes drivers and is able to detect uh, the intention 
of the driver of what he wants to do well before he actually um, sets the, the flashing lights or the, the turn signals or so. Uh, and that might give us uh, an early indication for all the processing that we do and, and all the, the vehicle control systems uh, to prepare for the maneuver that's happening.